Thank you for joining us for worship today. My name is Glenn Schlecht. I'm the senior pastor here at Emmanuel Lutheran in Loveland, Colorado. And what a joy it is to be able to gather together in worship with you, even if it is virtually, as we celebrate Palm Sunday and the beginning of this amazing, glorious Holy Week. Now, as we get started, I want to share with you just a couple of announcements. First of all, if you're new to us, tuning in for the very first time, welcome. I'm thrilled to have you join us. And I want to share with all of you that, that during this time of stay-at-home orders, isolations, quarantines, I've been sending out pretty much daily updates by email, providing resources for encouragement and also letting everybody know different opportunities that are, are coming up with regard to ways that we can give or serve or continue to let the love of Christ show through us in these unique days. If you're not receiving these email updates, but would like to, I would encourage you to, to send me an email. You can do that to churchoffice at emmanuelloveland.org, or you can also contact me through our website at www.emmanuelloveland.org. Dot org. Another announcement is uh, with this virtual service, we're not going to be taking time during the service itself to pause for a time of offering. Now, I need to let you know that Emmanuel and its ministries are continuing on with our church and our school, continuing to do all that we can here in our community of faith, our community at large, and beyond. And the offerings that you give to the Lord through Emmanuel's ministries help us to continue to do that. You can give offerings online through our website, again, at www.emmanuelloveland.org. Or you can also give your offerings through our Emmanuel app that can be easily found at the various app stores. The offerings that we give they're yet another way that we worship our Lord. First of all, by acknowledging as we give of our offerings that our Lord is the giver and provider of all that we are and all that we have. And secondly, by responding appropriately, in essence saying, thank you, Lord, for all that you have poured into my life and all that you have provided for me. So it is a wonderful and beautiful act of worship as we give from what the Lord has given to us that His love would continue to be shared and His ministry here in this place and time would continue moving forward. Now today is Palm Sunday, the beginning of what we call Holy Week, the most important week of the year for all of us who are followers of Jesus. Now, for those of you who are watching and listening who may not be familiar with either Palm Sunday or Holy Week and why it is such a big deal, let me give you this very quick overview. Now, this is Palm Sunday, the start of the last week of Jesus' physical life here on earth. On Thursday night, he's betrayed, handed over, and... On Friday, what we call Good Friday, is the day that he is crucified and died. And then, of course, three days later, Easter Sunday morning, he rises again to life. Now, it all starts right here on Palm Sunday. Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. And we'll be talking about the significance of all of that in our lives and in our world here today. I would strongly encourage you to join me again on Thursday, Maundy Thursday as we call it, and again on Good Friday, and absolutely on Easter Sunday morning. I'm going to be sending out more information with both the links to our worship services on our YouTube channel and in our email updates. So with that, let the celebration begin as we wave our palm branches and celebrate the coming of our King, Jesus. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Oh, 
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the coming King. Hosanna in the highest. Our King comes to us, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Our King comes to us, surrounded by shouts of joy and praise. Hosanna to our King, who is worthy of praise. Our King comes to us on the road that leads from the Mount of Olives to the cross on Calvary. Hosanna to our King, who has come to take away our sins. Our King rides along the way that we should travel too, but He rides it alone in order to bring us forgiveness and life. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We take a moment to quietly confess our sins in the quiet of our hearts, and then together in the spoken confession. Humble King, mighty Savior, when our words and actions reflect a reluctance to confess you publicly as Lord of our lives, forgive us. When we fear that humbling ourselves would be seen by others as weakness, forgive us. When we have betrayed your love for us through our lack of love for you, for others, and for ourselves, forgive us. Lord Jesus Christ, fix your mind in us, remake us in your likeness, empty us of all that hinders us from following you, empower us with the Holy Spirit so that our lives continually glorify you and our tongues forever confess you as Lord. My fellow sinners and saints in Christ Jesus, hear the good news. Jesus, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Through his humble work on the cross and through his victorious resurrection on that first Easter morning, It is with joy that I, as a called and ordained servant of the Word, declare to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Old Testament reading is from Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 through 11. Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout! daughter of Jerusalem, see, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. 
Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel reading is from John chapter 12, verses 9 through 19. A large number of people heard that Jesus was in Bethany. So they went there, not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom Jesus had raised from death. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus too, because on his account many Jews were rejecting them and believing in Jesus. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the Passover festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Praise God! God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord! God bless the King of Israel! Jesus found a donkey and rode on it, just as the scripture says. Do not be afraid, city of Zion. Here comes your king, riding on a young donkey. His disciples did not understand this at the time, but when Jesus had been raised to glory, they remembered that the scripture said this about him, and that they had done this for him. The people who had been with Jesus when he called Lazarus out of the grave and raised him from death had reported what had happened. That was why the crowd met him because they heard he had performed this miracle. The Pharisees then said to one another, You see, we are not succeeding at all. Look, the whole world is following him. Hello, boys and girls, it's Miss Martha. Happy Palm Sunday. I want to tell you about a game I used to play when I was a kid. It was called, If I Were a King, I Would. And honestly, the game was pretty simple. You would just take turns saying, if I were a king, I would, and then give like a rule or a decree or an idea that you would make as a, that you would do if you were a king. And so, for example, you would say maybe, if I were a king, I would make it a rule that we have to eat ice cream every single day. Or maybe, if I were a king, I would make it a rule that we have to just wear PJs every single day. And so I want to know what your ideas are. If you were a king, what would you do? So wherever you are, whoever you're with, share with them what you would do if you were a king. Seriously, take some time. Do that right now. Now you probably had some awesome ideas of what you would do if you were a king. Now I want us to think about if Jesus was playing this game. Now let me set the record straight. Jesus is our king. He is the king of the world. But let's just take it in this idea of a game where we maybe thought of some funny rules or some silly things that we would want people to do, things that we really liked, the things were, that would make our lives really awesome. Let's think about what Jesus would do if he were king. I think he would, if he were playing the game, say, well, if I were a king, I would enter into Jerusalem on a donkey. You see, the people in Jerusalem, they had heard all these things about Jesus. They had heard about these amazing things he had done, how he had done so many miracles, that he had helped people, that he had cared for people. And they thought, you know what? He's probably some strong and powerful and mighty king. That when he comes into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, we're going to be so excited. We're going to be singing, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We are going to celebrate him. We are so excited for this big, powerful, mighty king to come in. But then, like I said, if Jesus were king, he'd probably ride in on a donkey. And that's exactly what he did. He didn't come in in some fancy chariot or come in saying, I'm going to save the world, I'm going to change the world, I'm going to do everything good for you. He came in 
And he knew where he was headed that week. Because just a few days later, I think if Jesus were king, he would wash his friend's feet. Now, I know that seems kind of silly, maybe even a little gross, but you see, back in biblical times, they didn't have cars or bikes, and so they had to walk everywhere, and often they were barefoot or just wearing sandals, and so their feet would get pretty messy, pretty gross, and so usually it was the servant's job to wash their feet. But the night that before Jesus was going to die, that night he was with his closest of friends, and he said, you know what? I'm going to wash your feet. I'm going to be your servant. Yeah, the king of the world, like I said earlier, Jesus is the king of the world. And he said, no, I'm going to wash your feet. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to remind you that I care about you. So I think if Jesus were king, he'd wash his friend's feet. I think if Jesus were king, he would go to the cross and he would die for our sins that he would wear the crown of thorns, that he would be beaten, that he would be made fun of, that he would be hurt beyond even what we can comprehend. And I think he did it because he loves us. I think if Jesus were king, he would say, yeah, I know what I'm about to do, but I'm doing it because I love you. But I also do know that in all those things, yeah, that's not what we think of when we think of a normal king. We think of someone with that power and with that might, but the thing is, that is Jesus also. Because after that cross, after Jesus died, we know that three days later, he would rise again and that he had defeated sin, death, and the devil. That he is more powerful and more mighty than anything in the entire world because Jesus is the Son of God. Because he has the Son of God, because he has God's power, we know that he could defeat sin and death and the devil, that the grave could not hold him. And so that king that we were searching for all week during Holy Week and we didn't see, we see that. We see that Jesus is the king, full of power and might, but that he is also a humble servant who took care of his friends, who rode in on a donkey, who died on the cross for us. Sometimes it doesn't make sense to us, but it's because Jesus loved us so much that he did all these things, that he knew on Palm Sunday that his plan and his purpose was to head to the cross that it was his plan to die on that cross to forgive our sins because he loved us so much, but that he would rise again so that we could have eternal life with him in heaven one day too. And so I pray that today and every day we are remembering that we should be praising Jesus, that we should be thanking Jesus, that we should be reminded of how much he loves us and cares for us, that he is powerful and mighty, but that he is also a humble servant, that he takes care of his people but he has also defeated sin, death, and the devil because he is the Son of God. And so I just pray that this Palm Sunday, you will remember and we can cry out. We can say, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Save us, God, and that's exactly what he does. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for what you're going to do this Holy Week. Help us to take time out of our week to remember what you are doing Help us to remember how much you love us, that all these things you're going to do are out of your love for us. And just help us to be reminded that you just care about us so very much. All this we pray in your name. Amen. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I love Palm Sunday, don't you? With all the excitement that's in the air, the somber season of Lent we know is finally coming to an end and looking ahead toward what this week holds. Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and of course, Easter Sunday. And it all starts right here with this celebration today of Palm Sunday. Now, as we look at this Palm Sunday event from the Gospel of John, I have to say one of the things I've appreciated as we have been in the Gospel of John for the last month using the visual Bible is what it's really helped me to see and truly visualize more of of what was going on as we were able to, to experience some of those powerful conversations, the miracles Jesus performed, and the words that he spoke. And through all of this, 
It's also, for me, given some helpful context, particularly when it comes to today, some helpful context in understanding what led up to Palm Sunday and what filled out this particular Palm Sunday event. Now, last week, we talked about one of the most significant miracles of Jesus. He raised his good friend Lazarus from the dead. That miracle had taken place about a week before the events that we are celebrating here today. And as we talked about last week, that was no coincidence. Jesus knew exactly what he was doing, and he knew exactly what was coming in the next seven days. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead in order to get the attention of the people. He wanted to point them to himself and helping them to understand who he truly was. The promised one, the Messiah, the Christ, the very Son of God. And secondly, that they would believe in him. And that's exactly what happened. As Jesus told Lazarus' sister Martha, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. And after that miracle of raising Lazarus to life again, we're told that many, many people did in fact come to believe in Jesus. The stakes were being raised. Tensions were high there among the religious leaders and there in Jerusalem. And that resurrection miracle of Lazarus, that was a foretaste. A foretaste of what Jesus knew was right around the corner. His own death and his own resurrection to life once again. Now, the context for our Palm Sunday celebration today is an important transition from Lazarus to Jesus. Did you catch that in the Gospel for today from John? Jesus' disciples earlier had urged Jesus, begged him not to go to Bethany where Lazarus and his sisters were because that was too close to Jerusalem. It was a couple miles outside of Jerusalem. And his disciples, his closest friends, said, Jesus, you can't go there because there are people who want to kill you. But Jesus disregarded that warning because he knew that's exactly why he had to go. So what did we hear? The opening of today's reading in John 12, starting at verse 9. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well. For on account of him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and believing in him. In other words, from the religious leader's standpoint, things were getting worse. It was all continuing to escalate. The tensions were rising. And this crowd of people, this crowd that was coming to believe in Jesus, this is a crowd that the next day would usher Jesus into Jerusalem as he rode on that donkey. That was a crowd that was shouting, Hosanna! Hosanna in the highest! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! And in those moments, it all felt very unplanned, very chaotic, it was out of control. And that's a sense we get even at the end 
of today's gospel account. At the end, when we hear what the religious leaders were scared about and were concerned about, listen to this in verses 17 to 19. Now the crowd that was with Jesus when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word, which, a quick aside, is exactly what Jesus wanted. Not only then, but still today. That's what he wants for us. That this news of Jesus, good news of Jesus, would continue to be spread by all of us who are his followers, his disciples, his children. It goes on, many people, because they had heard that Jesus had performed this miraculous sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. Chaos! It's a little bit how life is right now, isn't it? Chaotic. Feels out of control. There's uncertainty. There are questions everywhere. Now, while the world today is in many ways, far different from first century Jerusalem, uh, I would contend that we are in a Palm Sunday moment right here and right now. You know, we're trying to get a handle on things as well. We're trying to figure out what to do, but it almost seems that the more we do, the more things are flying out of control and heading in every different direction. More and more, we're hearing about the stay-at-home orders spreading throughout the United States. We're thinking, at least I am, that we're getting closer to containing this virus, only to hear in the last couple of days that we're anticipating that the peak of the death toll or the death rate is going to hit us here in the United States this coming week. And the irony and the sadness of that all happening here in this holy week. Questions. Do we isolate? Do we not? What's appropriate interaction? What can we have? What shouldn't we have? economic and financial concerns, job losses, unemployment, six and a half million were the last figures that I had heard, fears of contracting the virus, loneliness, depression. Ah, oh, it just keeps going. It's crazy. What do we do? Where do we go? Where do we turn? What next? In the middle of all of this, in the middle of all of this, we need to hear the word of our God. Through the prophet Zechariah, we hear this in today's Palm Sunday account. Don't be afraid, O people of God. Look, here comes your king. And not in a white stallion, but coming in a way that you never expected. Coming on a donkey. Your king on a donkey. A beast of burden. A symbol of peace. A symbol of humility. Friends, for us today, we too need to hear the words of our God. Very similar words on this Palm Sunday. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Instead, look up and see your King is coming. He's here. Now, misunderstandings abounded back in the first century, Jerusalem, and, and they do still today. What kind of king was it that they were looking for? 
what kind of king are, are we looking for here today? It's not a king who's here to fix our economy. Not a king who's here with one swipe of his hand to wipe out this virus. It's a king who's here to help us in the midst of our deepest need. A king who's come to bring peace to our hearts, comfort in our grief, forgiveness for our sins, hope for this moment, and hope for a future. A future that we know we will always be with Him. So we live in a broken and sin-filled world. And that's not going to change on this Palm Sunday. It's not even going to change on Easter Sunday. We're experiencing this brokenness in a unique way these days with all that this coronavirus has brought and, and how it's changed our world, how it's changed each and every one of our lives. And we don't like it. We don't. It hurts. It's death. It's scary. It's lonely. But this king riding into our lives again today has come to bring what we can find nowhere else here in this world. Real hope. Real love. Real life. In the midst of the chaos, confusion, and craziness, He comes to bring His gifts. Gifts that He knows we need right now. And how? How does that come? By reminding us that this, it's not all there is. Sure, we're going to have troubles in this world. We're going to have troubles in these days. But these troubles, not the last word. Our Lord, our King, that King riding into Jerusalem again today, riding into our lives again today. He has the final word. He has the final victory. Where all of this will go, we don't know. But we do know that our King is going to lead us through it. He invites us to look to Him and to once again put our lives into His hands, believing that He reigns. He reigns both now and forevermore. His desire is to reign in your heart and in mine. What does that mean? How does that look? I want to encourage you to give some serious thought to those questions either right now or in the days to come. It's our what now for today. And here's what I'm encouraging you to give some thought to and consider. How can you demonstrate that Jesus is king in your life? And how can living your life with Jesus as your king help calm some of the fears and anxiousness you may be feeling? Go ahead and, and pause me now, if you wish. Take a moment to start thinking and talking about some of these faith-filled and important questions. Now, I'd love to hear from you and some of the ways that, that you answered these questions in your own life. How are you demonstrating by the life you're living and the things you're doing right now that Jesus is king? I'd love to hear it. And how is believing that Jesus is your king helping to, to calm you in the midst of the craziness, confusion, and uncertainty? Let me know. 
But as we live under the protective care and the amazing love of our King, my friends in Christ, remember what he says to us again today, here on this Palm Sunday. Don't be afraid. Look, your King is coming. In fact, he is here, right here, right now. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Amen. Now we join together in making confession of our faith using the words of an ancient creed, the Apostles' Creed. As we speak and join our voices together with those who have gone before us across the span of time and around the world today, speaking these words of truth drawn from the very Word of God itself. 
So join me as we confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God of the cross, tottering down the streets of Jerusalem on a donkey, you are not the Savior we expect. Your power doesn't look like the power we want our God to have. Your wisdom makes no sense to us. We're happy to join the crowd waving branches, but not so sure we want to follow you through this holy week into the temple courts, into the upper room, into the Garden of Gethsemane, to the high priest's house, to the assembly of elders, to Pilate, to Herod, to the place of the skull, to the foot of the cross. We need you to go with us on this journey. Grant us clear vision, courageous hearts, persistent steps. Even though we know what this week will bring, we sing, Hosanna, Hosanna. Save us, we ask of you. Lord, in your mercy, for those who are hurting for whatever reason, for those recovering from surgery, for those anticipating and waiting for surgery, we pray for your healing touch. For those who have lost loved ones or are experienced loved ones near death, bring your comfort and your peace to their homes. For those struggling or hurting for whatever reason, Assure them of your loving and compassionate presence for all the needs we express and are carrying in our hearts today. Have your way. May your will be done and your grace abound in every circumstance. Lord, in your mercy. In the quiet of our hearts, we pray for others that we know and are concerned for. Lord, in your mercy, for joys and celebrations, birthdays, anniversaries, and other good news in our lives, we praise and thank you for these gifts. Be present in our celebrations and happiness. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our country and our world with all that this virus is bringing by way of stresses, anxiousness, fears, death, and changes. We lift up those who are our leaders and the many decisions they need to make on a daily basis. Give them wisdom and your direction to know what is best. We also pray for all those who are on the front lines in this battle, all those in health, the health care field, first responders, law enforcement, and others. We pray for our military and those serving to protect and ensure and work for freedom here and around the world. Keep all of them safe. Lord, in your mercy. We lay these prayers before you today, praying the prayer your Son has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Children sing.